Hello everyone, my name is Doug Hills and this is the Manga Studio Guide. On this episode, we're going to break down how to create and work with a vanishing point tool in the program. Now, this is a function that was originally in Manga Studios 3 and 4, and it helped us create a vanishing point on the canvas with evenly spaced perspective lines radiating from it. This provided a visual cue that could be used to flesh out a scene or an idea before refining it later on with the perspective ruler. Unfortunately, this was a tool that was not included in Manga Studio 5. But, that's not going to stop us. We're going to make our own. Let's get started. To create our vanishing point tool, we're going to go over here to the tools palette and we're going to select the saturation tool, which is a function that was added a couple of versions ago in Manga Studio 5. It shares space with the direct draw and ruler and frame tools. So located here on the tools palette, or if you need to, press U on your keyboard. And I've selected the saturation subtool set, and you can see the various presets that are included. What we're going to do is we're going to select and then duplicate one of the presets by pressing the duplicate button here. And this brings up the duplicate subtool dialog box. We'll enter in a name. And then I could change the tool icon. I could add a background color by checking this and then selecting a new color. Let's go with a red. Hit OK and press OK. Now we have our duplicate, but it's not quite set yet. Coming down to tool properties, we click the wrench icon and this brings up the subtool details window. So I'll very quickly go through the various options that we need to change to make this a vanishing point tool. And in the process, I'm going to show and hide certain options so they can be easily accessible later on in the tool properties palette. So let's start from the top under saturated line. I want to make sure that always create saturated line layer is selected in the destination layer drop down list so that every time I create this, it creates its own vanishing point layer. I'm going to hide this because this is not necessary on tool properties. And I want to make sure that the lines radiated are straight and not curved. So I'll make sure make curve is unselected and I'm going to hide that as well. Coming to figure, I want to make sure that figure is set to ellipse and I'm going to come down here and check aspect type. So it'll lock it to a specific aspect ratio. I'm going to go over to specify length and I'm just going to make it as pinpoint as possible. You could choose a different width if you want, but keep it the same width and height to make it like a perfect circle. Under brush size, right now it's set to 0.8 millimeters, but I could reduce it. And I actually want to keep this easily accessible, so I'll make sure that the eyeball is selected. But I'm going to turn off disarray or a randomization because I want to keep these lines uniform. So I'll uncheck that. Now under drawing interval, I'm going to set up the gap of line or the space between these vanishing point lines. You can either use angle or distance, and it's just personal preference. I like angle, which is right now set to two degrees. And I'm going to turn off the randomization. So uncheck disarray. And I also don't want grouping. What you're seeing right now is the lines are arranged in groups of, in this case, five. I want to keep them all uniform, so I'll uncheck grouping, and I'm going to hide that from tool properties. Under drawing position, I'm going to set the length to its maximum value. By setting it to its maximum length, the lines will radiate as far out as possible. And I will turn off gap from reference position, which is basically the randomization of the lines nearest to the start of the vanishing point. I want to have that nice and uniform, so I'll uncheck that, and you can kind of see it's now uniform here, and I'm going to hide that. Under ink, you can set the opacity or how transparent or opaque the lines will be. And I'll actually bring this on to tool properties, so I'll click here. Under anti-aliasing, this just sets up how smooth or jagged the lines will look. Now generally I have anti-aliasing turned off because that will reduce the amount of rendering time needed, especially if I'm working on a larger canvas. But if I'm on a smaller canvas, I may use one of the anti-aliasing options. So I'm actually going to check that. Come to correction, I'm going to turn on able to snap. Now, there are going to be those times where maybe I want to have a guide or a straight ruler to represent my horizon. So when able to snap is turned on, if I place a vanishing point near one of these guides or rulers, it'll snap automatically to the ruler. And finally, under starting and ending, I want to make sure that there is no tapering on the start or end of the lines. There's actually starting taper here, so I'm going to turn that off and I get nice uniform vanishing point lines. This is all set, so I'll close this. And now I have all my major options that I want easily accessible over here on Tool Properties. All I do now is click and drag, and there it is. I don't even have to click and drag very far. It just automatically appears. If it feels like this is too dense, like you can see it's really dense here, I'll undo. And I'm going to reduce the size of the lines to, let's do 0.1 millimeter. And then click and drag, and there it is. And you're also kind of noticing the lines, I had anti-aliasing turned off, so the lines are a little hard to see. I'll undo again, turn on minor anti-aliasing. 
I have my vanishing point lines. Now, let's say I want to set up my horizon. I'm going to come over here, select the ruler tool, select the guide, and since I have my vanishing point here, I'll just set up a guideline. And this is my visual representation of my horizon. And from here, I go back to saturation, select my vanishing point, and now when I click the second vanishing point, it'll automatically be attached to the guideline. If I want to adjust this, or any of these lines actually, object select tool, select the vanishing point layer that I want, put this up top, in this case I want the first one, and then I just click and drag any place on or off of the canvas. Now this is very important. If you are going to use the vanishing point tool, you have to place your vanishing point initially on the canvas. If you try drawing it outside of the canvas, Manga Studio will not recognize it. So you'll have to add it to the canvas first, then use the object select tool to move it off the canvas. And while I'm at it, under tool properties, I can change the gap of line. Right now it's two degrees, but let's say I want to change it to distance. I can change the brush density. I can change the brush size to make them thicker. And I can even change the color. I click the main color button here and then select a new color. I'll go, let's go red. Hit OK. The vanishing point lines are now red. Adjust the brush density so you, can, so you can really see it. And from here, I just grab my pencil tool, select my drawing layer, maybe place it above my vanishing point layers, and then I just start drawing. Now, this is the big difference between drawing with the vanishing point tool versus with the perspective ruler. These vanishing point lines are there purely as a visual cue for me. I don't have to worry about, at this stage, usually, and this is like my rough stage, worrying about everything like being perfectly in perspective. I can get my general idea down while still understanding the space that I'm working in. So I can draw people, I can draw a chair, and I can even go, if I wanted to have like a cue for my vertical lines, I can come up to view, grid, and now I can have an idea of where the vertical lines are. Otherwise, I could just add a third vanishing point and create my drawing in three-point perspective. Then when I'm happy with this, I can adjust the drawing layer. Let's say I'll change the layer color to blue under layer properties. Maybe reduce the opacity a little bit. Add a new layer and switch to my pen tool, and then I can start inking. But of course, because now I'm on the refining stage, I should add in my perspective ruler. I'm going to turn off the grid for a moment, so view, grid, and I can create my perspective ruler either using the ruler subtool here, or layer, ruler frame, create perspective ruler. I have two vanishing points, so I'm going to create a two-point perspective ruler, press OK, and here's my perspective ruler. Then. With the object select tool selected, I select my perspective ruler, I bring the horizon up to match the guide, and I use the control points to match the vanishing point guidelines to what I created with the vanishing point tool. It may take a little bit of time to make sure you get it right, but you get the general idea here. But my perspective ruler is set, I just come back up to my ink layer, select my pen, Make sure that Snap to Perspective Ruler is turned on. And now I start drawing. Now again, you're noticing what I initially sketched out doesn't quite match up completely to how the finished, in this case, the chair, is coming out. And that's really okay because the vanishing point lines are there to help me develop my scene. And I think that's the important thing to understand about the vanishing point tool. This is not intended to replace tools like the Perspective Ruler. If anything, they complement each other. The vanishing point tool provides the visual cues needed to rough out a scene, while the perspective ruler can then be used to refine it. So while the vanishing point tool was unfortunately not included in Manga Studio 5, it doesn't mean we had to go without it. We just need to be a bit creative using Manga Studio's new saturation tool. And with that, I'm going to wrap up this episode of the Manga Studio Guide, which was brought to you by supporters like the ones you see here. If you would like to help me keep these videos free for everyone, you can pledge as little as a penny per video through Patreon, or you can purchase books, rulers, page templates, or just throw some money in the tip jar through my online store. And if you don't have any money, no problem. Subscribe to the Manga Studio Guide on YouTube. Tell your friends. Help spread the word about this series to anyone you feel would find it useful. Every little bit helps, and it is greatly appreciated. 
Thank you all for your support and for watching this video, and I'll see you next time.